Tuesday. And as usual, I always bring you some story that you don't want to hear. So Debola, Sonny, and um, David are going to help us put the four lines on the screen. I will talk about this extensively. And I'm sure a lot of Nigerians will be surprised at this news. Now, former sporting Lisbon manager, Jose Pesero, is reportedly the leading candidate to become the new head coach of the Super Eagles after interim coach Austin Egwa Voin vacated the position in March. It was also learned that Dutch coach Mark Water and former Algerian coach Adel Amruche are among the coaches who have shown interest in the Eagles' job. Apart from the aforementioned names, several top managers have been linked with the Eagles' job with former Barcelona manager Ernesto Valverde, ex-PSG and France coach Laurent Blanc, former PSV Heindeven manager Philip Koku, and former Sampdoria and Cagliari manager Walter Zenga, all touted as possible candidates for the vacant Eagles head coach position. There was, however, a twist Does Egwa Voin remain in charge of the Eagles for the World Cup final playoffs, which Nigeria lost to Ghana on goals aggregate. Meanwhile, an official of the ministry confirmed that Pesero, who in February said he never told the NFF that he would take over the Eagles' job, is now the man leading the race for the vacant position. There are reports that several coaches who applied for the Eagles' job are demanding for $55,000 with one of them even asking to be paid $250,000 a month. The reports added that Pesero is willing to accept just $50,000. They call it just, mm. really. Bukael Pesero. Mm. Um, we spoke recently about this, mm. and you were talking about... Um, and Shewun Ajidagba was on the phone, and Shewun said, nah. He doesn't have to be a foreign coach. He can be a homegrown coach, as far as he's a good coach, mm. really. It's personal what we want. The only mm. names we are seeing there is Laura Blanc. Mm. Been a while since yeah. we've seen Philip him in Koku. management. Um, not much to be said about Philip Koku. Um, the most impressive name there was Ernesto Valverde. Ernesto Valverde. So, Debola, should please please put this full line on the screen. And I, I, I've listed up, um, coaches. Mm. Well, Substantial you know, coaches. What is crazy to me about this story is that I, I've said before to you, I don't mind if we get a foreign coach. I don't mind if it's a home-based coach. As long as he's a good coach with a vision and a tactical setup, that a tactical philosophy that will bring our football into the 21st century of this era of football with uh, possession football heavy on the mind of Europe and most teams around the world trying to catch up to the likes of Germany, Spain, France. It doesn't matter who, where the coach comes from. My issue is that why is Pissarro the leading candidate? When it comes to every area of, every other area of uh, this country, when we want to go after foreign expatriates, we go after the very best. We're willing to pay however much it takes. Oftentimes you see white people, Chinese people, riding around in private cars on the streets of Lagos. And it's because work has brought them to this country. And we love that what they're doing is meant to help improve this country. It's meant to help stabilize infrastructures and institutions that need foreign uh, expertise. Hopefully one day we can replace those foreign expatriates with well-learned uh, Nigerians who have gained the necessary expertise to fill those positions. But in the case of the Nigerian Super Eagles, we always seem to go digging for mid to mediocre level managers. Egwa Void has come and gone. Mm. Nigeria is the only country that I know that the, the, the media, the press, don't have access to the documents signed mm. by this coach. Mm. Now, we have always asked, and Amadou Pinnick, in his regular, arrogant attitude, mm. doesn't answer. The question we ask is, do you put it as a clause mm -hmm. in the contract that, listen, you must try and manage some home-based players too? 
we have 22 players going to any competition and they are all foreign based how do we improve on our home home, home league I mean, we don't even use them at all. We don't even look their way. To be fair, I'm not sure if using them at international level is the way to improve the home league. If the you take them and sit them down on the bench and they mm. watch and they travel with them, that's ex it's called exposure. Yeah, but those are individual exposure for individual players. Maybe you pick, even if we pick an all um, home base player uh, team setup, that's 22, 25 players for whatever tournament they're going for. 25 players is a drop on the bucket in, in the amount of players that play and ply their trade in the Nigerian league. We need a structural ground up uh, reform in this country. Are you and we're saying not doing it. We don't have talented players that can be worked upon and can become world class. I'm saying that. I, I'm, I'm saying that USA 94, mm. Clement Vesterhoff mm. was conveniently, for me, was not the best coach Nigeria ever had. But for me, he was the best marketer. He knew people in high places. Mm -hmm. So he got Okocha in Eintracht Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. He got Kanoa Kwafinidi into Ajax. Mm -hmm. He got Sandy Ulisse into Stuttgart. He, you know, he did that. You he know. got Equiba into Monaco. I can. And, he brought, and when, he, when he calls them to the squad to mm -hmm. play, he's bringing in structured men who have worked in good structures, who are good players already, who have been trained well, and they come back and they do well. You can understand why but they the, do well. But can we, uh, can we both agree, and can everyone in Nigeria agree, that the Nigerian league of now is not the Nigerian league of then? True that. It's not as good as it used to be. The players that are coming out of it are not as good as they used to be. And every national team manager's first responsibility is to pick the very best squad. And the very best squad is, is, has Nigerians that are applying their trade at the highest levels around the world, not in Nigeria. So I don't blame the coach. My problem is that if we're going to build a structure, we need to decide that this coach is going to do it for the next 10 years, next 8 years, next 12 years. If it's going to take 15 years, let's do it. We're going to use that opportunity to raise the level of football, to raise the level of coaching, to raise the level of opportunities that our coaches, our footballers have to go apply their trade abroad, but having already learned the basics of the Nigerian Nigeria. philosophy. At least we can boastfully say mm. that uh, the most well celebrated coach mm. in England, the English Premier League, Alex Ferguson, mm. didn't get there until five years. Yes. Clement Westerhoff mm. didn't build that Galacticos mm. until four or five years. Mm. We should be patient, but Gennot Raw spent close to that. Mm. And he, he made a... But the thing is, okay. you see, the question, if there's oversight, if there's transparency, we would know that, for one, his mandate, his remit, was to improve the Nigerian league in the course of his management of the National League. We don't even know that to be a fact. And then even if we did know that, we would be able to judge every year how far, how much improvements have we attained. We cannot say, the, uh, we cannot say yes to the first question. We cannot say yes to the second question. So his tenor was a failure on the part of the administration that hired him. And we can only hope that they do not go down the same endless, bottomless rabbit hole that brought in Gennett Roll in the first place with no tangible achievements. Okay. Um, don't know if um, Debola can get the four lines on the screen yet, but we need to look at the UEFA Champions League semi-final. Mm. Ah. And that's Manchester City versus, versus Real, Madrid. Real Madrid, the Galacticos. Tonight, Pep Guardiola said his team at the Etihad be, Stadium must be ready to suffer, and no one will expect that because everyone will expect that um, Man City will hold on to most of the possession, True that. which will mean that most of the opportunities, uh, clear shots on goal, will come from them. But when it comes to Real Madrid, I don't know what it is about a team that has experienced the competition long enough. Eventually. That competition stops being scary. It's like that's the moment that their A game raises itself to become A+. Plus. And we've seen this season. Granted, some of their efforts were lucky. 
when they went up against PSG, they were lucky in some areas to score three goals in the final uh, 25 minutes. I would say that's great luck, but um, when you're that good, you make your own luck. Let's look at it like this. What Manchester City do is they try and lock you down. Mm. They lock you down and they don't make you move. But you see, that's the favorite thing that people like Karim Benzema, mm. Vinicius Jr., they want you to try and lock them down. Mm. So they will play games. They will fall down. They will dive. They will mm. get your yellow card. Mm. They will score. Mm. All, all things been equal. Yes. And surprisingly, the player that Pep Guardiola is well, banding towards that for everybody to see, is Raheem Sterling. Mm. I don't know why he thinks Sterling can make a difference against Real Madrid in this first leg. Well, when you're a possession-heavy um, team, when you rely heavily on possession, as Man City does, as Barcelona do, um, you rely on pace, ability to switch from moving the ball slowly across the field from one um, side of the field to the other, and then uh, creating a vertical, quick, incisive uh, passing uh, to the striker, to the wingers. And the pace allows you to stretch teams in, uh, in the defense. That way you have plenty of opportunities to square the ball or cut it back. And those are the, um, those are the um, benefits of having a striker, a, a forward like Raheem Sterling. Um, and obviously, Pep Guardiola will continue to dumbfound tacticians around the world because no one else is in his head and he overthinks so many aspects of the football sure. that he wants his team to play. But the likes of Real Madrid, they do something that has been done since basically the dawn of football very, very well. They counterattack very, very well. Sure. They can. It's like a boxer who can take a punch. But, they will hold Real Madrid you has, has taught us in the past, mm. matches that we have watched, that listen, we can stay with you. Mm. Counterattack, we'll mm. stay with you. Mm. We'll come at you, we'll come at you. Yes. You know, and you can't have players like Vinicius Jr. Mm. and the calling, very calling, Karim Benzema. Mm. You, you can't be sure of what they will do or what they can do. We don't know. Okay. The truth is, we don't know. The best defender in uh, the uh, Man City squad is Ruben Diaz. Diaz yeah. We have no idea if he's going to play. And there's something to be said about a team that is so heavy on possession. It robs the defenders, who, are, who might be individually brilliant, but it robs them of the practice sessions that they need to demonstrate what makes them special. They rely so heavily on possession. Most of the ball is played in the opposition's half. And when the opposition finally counters, it's like they're caught snoozing. And when that happens, the likes of Jones, uh, John Stones, the likes of Laporta can be caught by the pace of Vinicius, by the good positioning of uh, Rodrigo, and the ability, the endless, boundless ability of Karim Benzema to hold the ball, play the ball well with good passing routines with uh, his uh, striking partners, and to be told Benzema is in the form of his of life. His life. He's like old wine. And... Yeah. Okay, before we, we, we continue, don't forget that we, we're discussing a coach. Pesero is being touted. We've got a list of foreign coaches to be the Super Eagles coach. And we're asking the question, do we need a foreign coach? If it's home-based, what do, what do we really need, really? Pesero? And if it is Pesero? The call line is 0909 -408 -408. 0909 -408. Zero eight, four zero eight. You can call, and uh, let's talk about that. Okay, now let's look at Liverpool. Mm. Now, this case is a case of you are running with a toddler who just started to walk, mm. and then you look behind you, and it's right behind you, and you are running very fast. Where did Villarreal come from? Wow. I mean, Emery is. I mean, for no, up wow. until now, we've only known him to be very good and a master. He this man you in the Europa, Europa League last, last, last manager season manager in um, Europa. But ignoring that, that w is Europa. It's still Europe, and a lot of the teams that play in Europa have at different points played in 
uh, Champions League. Even Barcelona played in Europa this season. So as long as we accept that these teams all bring European experience, pedigree, and value to the game, irregardless of which level, which tier of European football they're playing, it is still worth noting that this guy has been there, done it before, won it multiple times. Now, it's not, it shouldn't be too surprising that on this occasion, the tier of football he happens to be playing in is, um, is in uh, Champions League. The real mess up, the only team that really messed up, I wouldn't say Juventus were too strong that we shouldn't have seen Villarreal beating them as a potential end result. But Bayern Munich haven't had the very best season. They might have just won their league, but their football has been lacking in certain quarters. There are questions being raised about their new manager, whether he's capable of raising their game to compete in European football every season as it's expected of a team that is so dominant in their league. Villarreal being where they are right now is by sheer grit, and Emery knows how to bring that out of teams. Well, Unfortunately, but Juventus us. lost their groove a long time ago when mm. Ronaldo left. Mm. But this is a Villarreal who doesn't have any big names, mm. no big names. But they're going up against Sadio Mane, Mo Salah, mm -hmm. uh, Diogo Jota, Firmino. With no big names, just like you said, sheer grit. Can mm. they make it happen? Yes, absolutely. They went up against a bunch of big names in Bayern Munich. They went up against a, a, a big name striker in Juventus, uh, Vlahovic. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you have big names. If your, fo if your football is consistent, consistent, indomitable, oppressive and overwhelming to the opposition, then you can do well. And if the players understand the setup, that's all it really needs. Once you, once you have a couple gems, Dan Juma is playing very well this season. Sure. Can we not accept that? Dan Juma was on the radar of Liverpool before they brought in Luis Diaz. That was one of the shortlisted options. A player that could potentially replace Sadio Mane. And the level of football he's showing right now, it's clear that he's, he was worth taking a look at. When you have one or two stars in your team, even if they are enveloped up by the system, because the system is so good, it's so all-consuming, then even a Villarreal can beat a, a Liverpool. But Liverpool, they're the kings of the press, and there are very few teams they that have... They always come at you. They always come at you. That's, there's that's... very few teams that have an antidote to stop in... Um, Liverpool. Man City is one. Maybe uh, maybe Real Madrid. Okay. Ahead of tonight's match against um, Real Madrid, the mm. Galacticos, Pep Guardiola. Um, okay. Um, well, Pep, Pep is saying a lot of things and mm. says, okay, listen, I'm going to have to take these guys on and let's forget history. Mm -hmm. He wants to forget history now. Says his team will face Real Madrid in their Champions League semi-final first leg. I need to put aside the different European pedigrees of the two clubs and draw on their collective strength. Now, Real have won Europe's top trophy a record 13 times, while City remain in search of their first Champions League title after losing in the finals to Chelsea last year. There is some history that is in City's favour, however. Two years ago, Guardiola's side knocked the current La Liga leaders out of the competition in the last 16 stage after winning both legs 2-1. City may have to take on Real without their first choice right back Kyle Walker and central defender John Stones, who are both doubtful with injuries. Liverpool face Villarreal in the other semi-final at Anfield on Wednesday. Ryan Sterling, very optimistic there. He says they want him. That. The truth is, they beat Real Madrid two years ago in the final 16, but the semi-finals is in the final 16. And sure. when champions get this close to the trophy, close enough that they can taste it, they don't let newcomers usurp them. <laughs> True that. Thank you very much, Mukayo. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Yomotayo. Yomotayo was behind the cameras. You can't see him, but it makes you see us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dibola. Thank you very much, David Davido. Thank you very much, Sunday Bidiba. Thank you very much. That's all we can take on the show today. Thank you very much, Dio D1, downstairs in the powerhouse. My name is Wally Scott. Till tomorrow, like I always advise you at the end of every show, 
if not for anything, at least for your heart. Do some sports. I leave you with Devil Nuggets, keeping their playoff hopes alive in the NBA.